Well, howdy, howdy, howdy. Finally, Seniors It Isn't Here. Greetings, boys, girls, and all of our non-binary friends, and welcome to this a brand new day. And remember, no matter who you are, you are valid. Hokie smokes late in the day. It's almost 4 o'clock, and it's going to be short because we had community meeting in the community center community meeting in the community center makes sense but I have been just a bundle of anxieties and such lately and it it was hard being there and I I left as soon as I could and just decompressing after that because it's exhausting to have anxieties I've been falling asleep so that's been fun but I've had the disruption of schedule because community meeting, you got to be there, and then dealing with the anxieties. And when I say dealing with anxieties, I mean not just today. I've been dealing with a whole bunch of issues. So, thumbs up on that. Not quite sure exactly what's going on, because when I say dealing with a whole bunch of issues, I mean I'm also having to deal with uh, obsessive compulsive behaviors. I don't have obsessive compulsive. Uh, problems but I do struggle with obsessive behavior which can become obsessive compulsive if I'm not careful and I've been struggling with some obsessive behaviors like locked doors is a common one that a lot of people have did I lock the front door did I not as you're leaving I have had issues with that Number one, it's come up because I have had leaving my front door open things where I've gone to the community center and back and discovered, hey, I didn't shut my door, I just left it open. So there are a lot of times that I can shut it, lean into it to make sure it's all shut and locked, get six feet away, stop and have to come back to re-lean into it to make sure that it's actually shut and locked because did I actually, I forget. So, luckily not a ton of them, but enough, and having enough anxiety issues, I have been cocooning really, really hard, staying away from people all in general. It's, I don't like it, but you got to do what you got to do. So, I've still been going out on walkies. It's just difficult. So, welcome to my my life <laughs> I'm not crippled by by my anxieties or anything it's just been a little bit more difficult and today it's just kind of culminated that it's been very difficult to uh, deal with things but I will feel better later tonight or tomorrow and then things will go back upward I've had cyclical depression and such like that my whole life. I'm used to things happening and then drifting back up and out. That's the way life is. Like with my heel, the past like year and more, I have been dealing with bone spurs on my heel. It's like I've had them. Like once you have bone spurs, you have bone spurs your whole life. I had issues with my bone spurs back when I was like 10 years old and then they stopped bothering me until I was in my early 20s and then they stopped for 40 years so they dipped in and then went back out and then dipped in and then left for a long time and then they've dipped in been sticking around but whereas I was month two months I can't remember how long now, but I could barely function inside this room because they were so bad. Now I'm out walking at full race walking speeds. Still hurts, but I can now move at race walking speeds on it. So thumbs up for that. Hopefully it'll continue leaving and such. Point being, of course, that I'm kind of used to things dipping into my life, making things awful, and then leaving again. <laughs> <laughs> Thumbs up for that. Still though, I have been surviving. I have been... 
part of it, of course, I was just paying my rent, and the person that you pay my rent to, well, everybody pays their rent to, was talking, of course, about change of seasons, and it has been a lot grayer and more rainy, and while I'm, I generally have, I've enjoyed the winter times, but I do have seasonal affective disorder, and if I don't get out into the sun, or there is no sun, I'm not getting the stuff that aids you, and which makes you feel all depressed and awful because you're not getting the sunlight that you need. I do have issues with that, and so that could be a part of it. And then, of course, even though I have largely gotten over the death of my wife of 12 years, it has been 10 years, and while you never get over things, time does not heal wounds, but it just continues putting a space between you and the hurt so that it's just, it's got all these muffled pads on top of it. It's still there. It's just buried beneath muffling cotton. This was her favorite time of year leading up to Christmas time. So, there's that as well. Yay! Still though, I mean, I've been surviving, I've been doing what I can, I have been watching videos, I've been playing video games, I have been trying to do as much as I can to keep myself active, because that's a big issue as well. Especially as you get older, you have to deal with uh, depression. And I remember, I've talked about this before, but back in the 1980s, when I was in my early 20s, they were talking about the epidemic of depression among the elderly. And with the falling apart of any sort of mental health services in the United States here, I can't imagine the problem's gotten any worse. Because, after all, as you get older, you're watching your body fall apart. It will not do the stuff that it used to. And now you're having to take medications, maybe to keep your body alive. So you're having your body falling apart in front of your eyes. You can't do the stuff you used to. You're not interested in the things you used to be. And you're watching your cultural relevance vanish. You can't talk about the stuff you used to watch on TV. There's hardly anyone around to talk about it with that remembers that stuff. And that's just the way life is. Loss of cultural relevance, and then you watch the black wall of oblivion get closer day by day. Sure, you don't know when that wall's going to crash into you. But it is going to crash into you. And it is getting closer every single day. So what you got to do and struggle to do as you get older especially is find a purpose for yourself. Because as you get older a lot of the things that used to be your purpose are gone. Especially American society. So they grind it into your skull that your job is your purpose. Now that used to be when I was younger. A lot of things have changed because the world you grew up in no longer exists and things have been accelerating to the point that it's the world from five years ago no longer exists. So when I say this, I am speaking in grand generalities that in many cases are no longer true, but in some, especially the American South, your job is your worth. If you can't work, you don't have much worth. So when you get older and you can't work or you're retired or it's just you're older, you don't have that worth to hold you together. Now I haven't had that issue myself. I'm not typical in that fashion. I haven't tied my self-worth and purpose to being able to work. But still, at my age, it's hard to find a purpose for things because uh, I'm older. 
I'm not going to be able to get a job, especially broken. But one thing I will end that depressing stuff on is just to say this one real quick thing. I've said it before, but it is still funny, and I imagine that the people that have heard it before way back when are maybe no longer listening, or if they are, I've hopefully forgotten. Time has put enough space between myself and the death of my wife that even I was able to make this joke like five years ago. But it's this of the six people that were semi intimately involved in my wedding my two parents, my wife, her two parents, and then myself. Out of all those six people that were involved in my wedding in 2002, I'm the only one that is still alive. My wife died first. And then my parents, about the same time that my wife's parents were dying. I am still standing, which means winner, winner, chicken dinner. <laughs> you got to be able to laugh because life is going to stomp on you otherwise. Well, it's going to stomp on you anyway, but all you can do is laugh. Because after all, uh, you can't change reality, but you can change your perception. And perception is reality and that it changes how you react to life. Yeah, you can't change things like, oh, you lost your job. Or, oh, your wife died. Or, oh, all of your friends have died. You can't change things like that. You can only change how you perceive it and thus how you react to it. The best way I feel is to get over it so you can laugh. Because after all, especially when it comes to the black wall of oblivion, death rushing at us, you can't change the fact that you're going to die. I can't change the fact that I'm 62 and that I ain't got too many decades left. Maybe two, if I'm lucky. But it's better, I think, to spit in the face of death and live than to cower and not live. Which, I've wanted to mention this. I watched some a teardown video on the movie Fido. It's a zombie movie. And I really liked the ending of this movie. What happened was there was a zombie apocalypse. The people in this town, and I don't even know if there's the rest of the world, because outside of the town city gates are zombie apocalypse, so who knows? But they use zombies in their little home village where they have controlling collars on. And one of the zombies, this young boy Timmy, calls him Fido, and they start hanging out together. And the mother starts, you know, not being romantically interested, but Fido is interested. Now, the father is just absolutely fixated on death, because when you die, you're going to come back as a zombie. He does not want to be the kind of zombie that works and has a collar and does the stuff. He wants to have a proper burial where they cut off your head put it in a box, and bury that where your zombie head just stares into darkness forever. So he spends the entire movie, when things start falling apart, constantly fixated on death. He has thought that he is a good father because he did not try to eat his child like his father tried to do to him, and at 11 he had to kill his father during the zombie war. So he's got reasons. But he spends the entire movie fixated on death and in the end dies and head chopped off and just buried. The zombie Fido that helped cause all this was different. Maybe all zombies are different in this way. But while it didn't remember anything, it was fixated on life. It enjoyed smoking like to smoke 
end, because of this all happening, Fido tried to help the mother and the son, while the father was fixated on, you know, make sure they bury my head. And in the end, because the mother was pregnant, this is spoilers, <laughs> a little late in that for it, but there is all of them. Fido has a collar, but it is a non-controlling collar. Has no control, but is not wearing a zombie work suit, is wearing bright summer clothing, shorts, a Hawaiian shirt, is smoking a cigarette, has a drink, is left with the baby, has Timmy and the mother as part of the family. It, like I said, is left with the baby, leans in just to rub their fingers on the side of the baby's face and then sits back up, takes a big old smoke on the cigarette, and even though it can't really talk, goes kind of, Ugh. it's Fido is living the life. Absolutely. Maybe want to see the movie. Anyway, if you could like, comment, share, subscribe, and only share with people that you think would like to watch a depressed old man talk about incomprehensible subjects in a thoroughly inane fashion, that would be very cool. Thumbs up for that. And of course, I do have a GoFundMe going on for a new computer. If you could help me get just a, a little bit more, I am right on the very edge of that hard cutoff. Uh, 500 bucks and then it's it's there so if you could help me out that'd be very cool you definitely don't have to even if I don't get another penny I still have enough to get a good computer and if in a, a bit there's nothing else coming in I am spending that but if you could check it out that would be very awesome that would be very very cool if you cannot if you do not wish to if you have and just want me to hurry up and buy something well of course do not donate but if you could check it out Thumbs up. Thank you. I just don't want to hurry up and do something and then spend the money foolishly. So, very cool. And of course, every Patreon patron, Patreon patron, you are beautiful and awesome people. You take me from the badly hurting monkey to a hurting monkey, but nowhere near where it used to be. This hurting monkey is very glad and happy to be, well, up here. Thumbs up. Thank you. It is appreciated. You are beautiful and awesome. And if you've left me a comment, you too are beautiful and awesome. Just in a different way. I read every comment that YouTube shows me. I thumbs up and heart each one that I am allowed to. And I answer as many as my nerve compression will let me do. Which is not as many as I would like, but at least it's some. So thumbs up and thank you very much. And of course, if you've watched this far, uh, if you could write suave into the comments that would be very cool to let the YouTube algorithm know that people do watch the videos. Thumbs up and thank you for everybody that does pl play that blatant in I can speak English that plays that blatant engagement farming game. Thumbs up. Thank you. It is appreciated. So I'm just going to edit, render, upload, and then take care of myself. It is Friday. We're going into the weekend. So do what you got to do, and then take care of yourself and have fun. And if you can't get done the things that you would like to get done, please do not beat yourself up. It does not help. So for the second time, until we meet again, you take care. Have a great day today. I will see you on the flip side. And that is indeed a very, very good thing. Uh, it has been it has been fun I mean I've had cyclical depression so even when I'm down I know I'm going back up so I'm not worried it's just when you're in the trough it's no fun especially when you throw anxiety on top of it again I'll be okay hopefully you'll be too thumbs up and uh, yeah have a good one